and gentlemen, welcome back to today's question period episode. Justin Trudeau is in fact scheduled to appear in uh, in the House of Commons today, and he's going to be stacked up against Pierre Polyev in the blue corner. Jagmeet Singh is also supposed to be in the House, so it's going to be a pretty interesting day. Now, before we get into it, of course, the ritual is I want to encourage everyone to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already. It does really help grow the channel as well as push the live stream out. And I have some news. I have some news. This is my last stream. This is my. This is our last stream, sort of. Nah, no, not to not to be too too big of a Debbie Downer because I'm flying to Ottawa later today. Actually, soon after the stream, I'm flying to Ottawa. I'll be in Ottawa tomorrow. Now, the stream will resume tomorrow. My wife will uh, take take over. She's probably not going to appear on camera, but she'll be working behind the scenes, and the stream will be there. So don't worry, folks. Don't worry. You can still appear tomorrow for the stream. It's going to resume. I just won't be on camera. I'll actually be up in the viewing gallery, potentially, or Thursday. I don't know. I don't want to say what day I'm going. I don't want to say what day I'm going. I've already said too much. Shit. All right. Well, the cat's out of the bag. I'm I'm going to question period tomorrow. <laughs> I don't want to say it in case a bunch of people showed up and that I can't actually get in. But yes, I'm going to question period tomorrow. So um, if that's not a good reason to to smash the like button and subscribe to this channel, then I don't know what is. But I did set out the challenge that once we reached 100,000 subscribers, I would go to Ottawa and watch Question Period live in person. And as you can see, we're at over 103,000 subscribers. So tomorrow is the day. This is the last stream where I will be here in the studio because again, I am flying to Ottawa tomorrow. So thank you everybody for participating in that challenge. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a pretty exciting Question Period. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to, uh, to actually go and attend in real life tomorrow. So enough about that. Uh, without further ado, let's get on with the stream, shall we? Um, I'd like to see some W's in the chat for mission accomplished, passing 100,000 subscribers. If you can all do that, just drop some W's in the chat. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's begin with statements by members. They have, I don't know, about 10 minutes of this. So get your coffees, get your beers, get your snacks, get yourself situated because question period will start the moment statements by members concludes. Without further ado, here we go. Because if you're diagnosed with cancer, pretty well everything else in life, including much of what we do here, seems pretty insignificant in comparison. The COVID pandemic showed us what the global scientific community can do when it puts its collective minds towards something. Experts were predicting it was gonna take us years to come up with vaccines. We came up with several within a year. Why can't we do the same thing in order to try to beat cancer? In the United begins States, the trek to 200K. Has pledged no to doubt. Four million deaths by the year 2047. We in Canada can and ought to make a similar <clears throat> commitment. Madam Speaker, or Mr. Speaker now, nothing in life is ever accomplished unless you try. Thank you. you don't have the, the Honourable Member for Abitibi to Ms. Kamang. The coach in me is so proud to announce that my team, Rowan, Rowan Noranda, Pro Gas, Studio Rhythm and Dance. Let's see if we can get to 250 likes, eh, before, spectacular before the uh, question period starts. Against the mighty we Phoenix are at about 115 right now on the live in the M. 13B category last Sunday in Drummondville. <clears throat> Hard work was an integral part of our pro-gas identity, led by a devastating attack from Landon, Felix, Alex, and the courageous Océane, Raphael, and Jules, and a rock-solid defense from Nathan, Samuel, Emric, and Loïc. Congratulations to my coaching team, starting with its great architect, Eric Stevens, Sandy, and Marc-Antoine. Thanks to all the parents. I must tell you about a unique player, Mr. Speaker, our captain clutch, Jules Lemire, who scored the final goal in the shootout. Seven goals in five games, including the overtime winner in the quarterfinals and just shy of 100 goals this year. I love you, buddy. You took all the pressure, but at the end of the year, you were the one with the big banner on your lips. Jules Lemire, you are my hero. <laughs> The Honourable Member for Orléans, Orleans. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have the pleasure to tell you that yesterday the Minister of National Defence released our defence policy update. Our North, strong and free, a renewed vision for the 
for Canada's defense. This update includes an investment of $73 billion. Yeah, we're at 164. We need 100 more and likes. provides a clear <clears throat> plan to strengthen before the, the foundations before crash of the Canadian starts. Armed Forces, defend our country and our global interests. We know that our Canadian forces and their families are at the heart of everything we do, and it's more important than ever to invest in them. That's why our plan commits... $295 million over 20 years to establish a housing strategy, $100 million over five years to improve access to child care for Canadian Forces personnel. This is an important update to give our troops the tools they need to defend Canada. Thank you. And a welcome an honourable member from Durham. Mr. Speaker, I am grateful to the communities of Clarington, North Oshawa and Scugog for electing me to fight for them and their families. We are a diverse riding that brings together working class and middle class families from all cultural backgrounds. This is why I must oppose the NDP Liberal government's elitist ESG policies and divisive diversity, equity and inclusion agenda. ESG and DEI are smokescreens, allowing big businesses and liberal politicians to create a false sense of progress while life gets harder in this country. Conservatives stand for all Canadians, no matter what you look like or where your parents are from. <laughs> Honourable Member from Oakville, North Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Earlier this month, I was part of an all-party delegation led by the member for Ottawa South to the 148th Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union, the global organization of national parliaments founded in 1889. Our Canadian delegation played an important role on a number of fronts, including AI, climate change and the situation in Gaza. While I was in Geneva, I was privileged to represent Canada at the debate on the resolution entitled Partnerships for Climate Action, Promoting Access to Affordable Green Energy and Ensuring Innovation, Responsibility and Equity. Canada introduced amendments that were accepted during drafting, particularly dealing with more inclusive language to include women, girls, people with disabilities and Indigenous peoples. I'd like to spend, extend a special thank you to Matthew Pringle from the Library of Parliament, who supported me to successfully have Canada's perspective reflected in the final resolu resolution on the importance of parliaments around the world taking decisive action on climate change. Oh, oh. <laughs> the Honourable Member from Surrey Centre. Mr. Speaker, today we commemorate the Battle of Vimy Ridge, which took place in France in 1917 during the First World War. We honour those who bravely served our country mm -hmm. in the war and paid the ultimate price to ensure the peace and freedom we enjoy today. Mm -hmm. The ridge had fallen into German hands during the initial advances of 1914. Beginning on April 9, 1917, the soldiers of the Canadian Corps fought their way up the ridge. By April 12, the Canadians were victorious, capturing Vimy Ridge. The Battle of Vimy Ridge proved to be the great, of a great success, but it came at a heavy cost. Almost 3,600 Canadian lives were lost, and 7,000 were wounded during the four-day battle. More than a century has passed since the Battle of Vimy Ridge, but the legacy of those Canadians who served live in our memories. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Charlevoix. We got a few more minutes before question period starts, folks. We just passed 250 likes. There's over a thousand people watching. If everyone or half the people can smash the like button, we might be able to get over 500 likes before QP starts. Distance. At the same time, all available artillery supported by underground mines that were packed with explosives shattered the German positions. Uh, the infantry protected by the artillery barrage rose up and charged towards the enemy trenches. For some, this battle represented the birth of Canada as a sovereign nation, as for the first time all the Canadian expeditionary forces were brought together to assault the enemy's fiercely defended ridge. After the Battle of Vimy Ridge, the Canadian Army erected a wooden cross on the site of the battle in memory of those fallen. 
When the Vimy Memorial was built, this cross was entrusted to the guard of the Royal 22nd Regiment and placed at the Quebec Citadel. This cross is still used in ceremonies commemorating the Battle of Vimy Ridge as it is today. The Honourable Member for Ottawa Vanier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to pay tribute to Benoit Pelletier, a published author, a distinguished minister in the Quebec government. Benoit played a crucial role in strengthening the ties between Quebec and Francophone communities across Canada. His bold vision and commitment to the Francophonie marked a significant turning point in our country's history. As Minister, Benoit worked to promote Quebec's place within the Canadian Francophonie, leaving a lasting legacy for future generations. He was always committed to the defense of our language. The FCFA awarded him the Prix Boreal, a Boreal Award, and he was recipient of Francis Ordre des Palmes Académiques for his commitment to education. He was a man who had heart, who adored the Utoué, his adopted region. As a jurist and politician, he left an invaluable political legacy. His dedication as a lawyer and professor at the University of Ottawa inspired many students. Our thoughts are with his family and loved ones. Rest in peace, Benoit. The Honourable Member from, from Kenora. While Canadians are struggling to feed, heat and house themselves, this NDP Liberal government went ahead with a 23% carbon tax hike on April 1st. And we already know that they're not worth the cost, Mr. Speaker. After eight years, uh, rent and mortgage payments have doubled. Their deficits are driving up inflation. And food banks received 2 million visitors the, um, a single the flowers month last are... year, Mr. Speaker. Now, with Budget cancer. Day just around the corner, Conservatives are calling for a cap on government spending through a dollar-for-dollar dollar approach, a plan to build homes, not bureaucracy, and we are calling on the government to axe the tax on food and farmers here, here. by immediately Makes passing sense. Bill C-234 in its original form, Mr. Speaker. That would support farm families and ensure that all Canadians can afford to put food on their table. It's clear that only common-sense Conservatives have a plan to make life more affordable and bring home lower prices for all Canadians. Nice. We need just about 100 people to smash the like button and we'll be at 500. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this NDP Liberal it's government... It's free to do, Canadians and it helps fight climate change, live. or something of doubled. the sorts. The cost of owning a house has doubled, and this go Liberal government is out of touch and is not worth the cost. This week, the Canadian Housing and Mortgage, Cor Mortgage Corporation said that the problem's only getting worse, that despite all the photo ops and billions of dollars of promised spending, <laughs> Canada is building fewer homes today than in the 1970s. This crisis is causing the Liberal government to keep hard-working Canadians from owning a home. By axing the tax, Conservatives will make all aspects of home ownership more affordable. We will balance the budget and bring down interest rates. We will cut red tape that keep communities from building homes and that Canadians can afford. Only common sense Conservatives have a real plan that will build homes for Canadians so that they can afford to live. It's Daffodil Month. <clears throat> it's a national fundraising campaign for the Canadian Cancer Society. The Honourable Member That's why for they're wearing Solange. that. My family and I celebrated my 12th year in remission from cancer and immensely grateful for the continued time we have together. And today, I am proud to be in this cancer, house so. to extend a heartfelt a thank you to the team that. of the Canadian Cancer Society for the role they played in seeing me through my own experience and the support they've provided to countless more each and every day since 1938. For some like me, it's the invaluable information that they provide on their website, which was the first resource I turned to after my diagnosis for others. The support comes from the work they do on the ground, providing emotional support. All right, folks, we're almost at 500 likes. More resources to find QP is just about disease, to begin. Which will affect <clears throat> one in three Canadians in their lifetime. Led by Andrea Seal, dedicated team members like Kelly Masadi and Rose D'Souza, and an army of dedicated volunteers like Kirsten Watson and Shaylee Prashabati, I say a heartfelt thank you. Canadians are healthier, better, and stronger because of your unwavering advocacy, dedication, and support. All right, folks. Smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. We're about to begin.
The honourable member from Esquimalt, uh, Santa. Trudeau is there, and so is Pierre. I rise today to stand with the community-based Ooh, prevention be services and the other dedicated organizations who serve those living with HIV. Yeah, AIDS. F cancer, man. Drop, drop, drop an F the funding in the chat for F to cancer. To eliminate HIV in the upcoming budget. F cancer. The government's committed to having 95% <clears> of those vulnerable <throat> being tested. 95% of those tested receiving treatment and 95% achieving viral suppression by 2025. But it's failed to meet its interim targets. Instead, rates of new infections are sucks, rising, man. not falling. Shame. New infections in Saskatchewan have increased by over 30% since 2020. Among Indigenous people in Saskatchewan, the rates of testing, treatment and suppression are only 67%, 67% and 68%. Rates of new infections are falling dramatically in other similar countries. All we need is an investment of $100 million annually over five years. Yet federal funding for self-testing kits ran out March 31st. Funding for outreach in Indigenous communities on the prairies also came to an end. Without investments in self-testing kits and community outreach, Canada will continue to fail at limiting the spread of new HIV infections. The Honourable Member for saint Thérèse de Blainville. The Action Movement in Montreal is hosting a campaign. Someone checked CPAC, they are, and they have sure 300 all viewers, workers and we have 1,400. Matern maternity leave we are, are not penalized unfairly <laughs> by an archaic and That's outdated awesome. system. This is an illustration <clears throat> of kudos to everybody who's part of the community. Update the system means to a lot. end the discrimination that women are facing when it comes to the access to programs and to fix the uh, wrong done to female workers. That is why in the Bloc Québécois, we have been pushing for a long time for a reform for equality and for accessibility. It is time for this government to take action. There is a budget coming up. They must put an end to this uh, sexist uh, situation and update the EI system. We stand with this community group who is waging this battle. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Hastings, Lennox Naddington. As Canadians know all too well, this Prime Minister has abandoned any pretense about fiscal stewardship, with his government racking up more national debt than all previous Prime Ministers combined. His record-shattering tax and spend agenda has driven up inflation and interest rates, increasing the cost of food, fuel and housing. It has gotten so bad that leading economists are warning that the record high spending may delay interest rate cuts. The common sense conservatives have a simple solution yeah. that can be implemented in next week's NDP Liberal government. Budget. The government ought to find a dollar in savings for every dollar spent. Yeah. This is reasonable and a okay. simple lever that can be used to get their inflation under control. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, after eight years, Canadians are in debt, exhausted and looking for relief. Let's axe the tax, build the homes, cap the spending, fix the budget. Let's bring it home. Yay! I think we're about to begin, folks. The Honourable Member oh. Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, one unlikely person has recently emerged oh, as a new guy. champion of carbon pricing. Oh. Someone who has done the math personally and knows firsthand that the vast majority of Canadians get back more than they pay. I am, of course, referring to the Premier of Alberta, Daniel Smith, who recently said, quote, I do my You shouldn't be weaponizing. You're not allowed to use a federal platform to weaponize against provincial matters. I go back and look at what I spent last year at carbon taxes, I would say that I probably end up better off with the transfer. Oh. Premier Smith went on to say that carbon pricing is, quote, the optimal way of going about and getting the outcomes you're looking for, and that this almost seems like the perfect policy. Oh. Mr. Speaker, oh, I agree with Danielle Smith. Our plan does leave more families better off, while at the same time addressing climate change. And I want to thank her. Provincial matters, federal platform, it's a no-no. Here we go, here we go. Questions are Oral questions. Questions are <laughs> Honorable the Leader of the Opposition. The Common Sense Conservatives want to axe the tax, build the homes, mm -hmm. fix the budget, and stop the crime. But this Prime Minister is simply not worth the cost. 
after eight years. He's doubled national debt, which has led to rampant generational inflation, forcing two million Canadians to food banks. According to his own statistics, the Prime Minister has spent more on interest on that than on health. Why is he giving more money to bankers than to actual healthcare professionals? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, quite the contrary. It's the Conservatives who continue to uh, put forward austerity and cuts whilst we invest in nurses and doctors. We are here to invest $200 billion dollars, Mr. Speaker, over the next 10 years uh, in oh order to God. improve our health care system. We are here to deliver a national program for food uh, at schools to help children study with a full stomach. We will also be here to broaden child care benefits so that families can take care of their children while working. We are here to help them. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. But he's still not worth the cost. He continues to spend, 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 causing worst inflation levels. There are two million people that have to go to food banks every month. He's doubled the cost of housing, even after having spent $80 billion in housing. These are programs that balloon government costs and that but into provincial jurisdictions. Will he finally meet our premiers to defend his inflationist and expansionist policy? Nice. Pierre's looking good, man. <laughs> Trudeau's not. He's the looking real thin. Honorable Prime Minister, we will continue to, con to meet premiers to work on affordability for families. In order to work for housing investments in Quebec, for example, we've put forward $900 million for the... House Building Accelerator Fund and Quebec is... Is it just me or does Trudeau look like a halfway overly dry rag? Throughout the province, we are here <clears> to <throat> work hand-in-hand hand with provinces to fight against climate change, to fight against the housing crisis, and to invest in young people, invest in seniors. We will be here to build a stronger future whilst the Conservatives keep preaching austerity every single day. And I have chef de l'opposition. Common sense Conservatives... Oh my God! It did it again! It did it again! Don't work for housing investments, meeting crisis. I have chef de l'opposition. Common sense conservatives. It's out of my control. I got one gigabyte internet. Relax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. This prime minister is not. That's our government money going cost. to. Indeed, his carbon tax. Good work. Elementary budget officer <laughs> has proven costs sixty percent of Canadians more then they get back in rebates, is now opposed by 70% of Canadians. Everybody understands that the tax is driving people to the food bank. That's why six premiers, including the Liberal Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, have asked for a meeting. Will he agree to a televised carbon tax conference if he's so sure of himself on this issue? Look at that, man. The right honourable Prime Minister. Pierre ain't messing around today. The parliamentary budget officer has confirmed that 8 out of 10 families across the country get more money with the Canada carbon rebate uh, attached to the price on pollution than it costs them. That's $1,800 arriving for a family of four in Alberta. It's thousands of dollars right across the country. These are things that are helping people with the high cost of living and groceries at the same time as we fight climate change. But Mr. Mr. Speaker, uh, what would be also helpful is if we were able to deliver the doubling of the rural top-up to put hundreds of dollars in the pockets of Canadians, but the Conservative Party is blocking the legislation to double the rural top-up. Oh, Pierre got up for a fight. Mr. Speaker, that is mathematically impossible that given that the NDP Liberal government has a combined majority and can pass That's anything right. it wants. <laughs> Which is exactly why we're in such a mess today as a country. After eight years, this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost. And that's why the Parliamentary Budget Officer confirms 60% of Canadians are paying more in carbon taxes than getting back in rebates. But why doesn't the Prime Minister, if he believes the contrary, why doesn't he have the courage 
to sit down in a televised and open forum and have a carbon tax conference with the premiers. Wow, man. Drop some W's in the chat for Pierre. That was solid. We did sit down with the premiers eight years ago and established the pan-Canadian framework on climate change that both puts a price on pollution and puts more money back in the pockets out of eight of ten Canadian families in the jurisdictions where the federal backstop applies. That is a way of both fighting climate change and helping with affordability. Now, not only are the Conservative Party uh, counting on pulling away, taking away those Canada carbon rebate checks, uh, they're arriving this coming Monday on April 15th. People will see in their bank accounts the Canada carbon rebate that puts more money in their pockets ahead of uh, the costs associated, associated with fighting climate change. No, we've done independent polls on this channel. He met the premiers in 2016. Since that time, he's broken the promise he made them. He said the tax would only go up to 11 cents a litre. Now, he admits it will go up to 61 cents a litre. He said the tax would make people better off. Now, we have the Parliamentary Budget Officer's report, which confirms 60 percent of Canadians pay more than they get back. The Prime Minister said, and I quote in 2015, Canadians need a PM who will meet with the Premiers. What happened? Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Drop some W's for Pierre. While the Conservative leader continues with his misinformation and disinformation, the reality is the Parliamentary Budget Officer uh, said that 8 out of 10 Canadians do better with our price on pollution and the Canada carbon rebate. But speaking of misinformation and disinformation, any responsible leader uh, that receives an endorsement and support from proven conspiracy theorist liar Alex Jones would have immediately denounced that. But that's not what the leader of the opposition did. He did absolutely nothing, because those kinds of endorsements fit within his political strategy. Justin Trudeau got endorsed by Hamas! <laughs> what? What? Drop an L for Trudeau! Drop an L! They're gonna mute the mic. I swear to God, they're gonna mute the mic. Insane to bring that up. Order. They don't have any control over who publicly supports one another. The oh my goodness. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister is multiplying interference in Quebec's jurisdiction. In Ottawa, there's no department or expertise in health or education or child care or municipal affairs. They don't know how things work, but they have our money due to a budgetary imbalance. Does he recognize that the Assemblée Nationale of Quebec is has better skills in health care, education, child care and municipal affairs? Simple question. I cannot believe they just mentioned the Alex right Jones in Canadian Minister. Parliament. Mr. Speaker, we've always recognized and <laughs> respected provincial jurisdictions, and we respect Quebec's specificities, but we know that even with all the expertise under the sun, there are still Canadians who are finding housing, who are trying to find housing, people who are trying to find childcare spots, people who are finding it hard to make ends meet. And as a federal government, we are here to work in partnership with Quebec, with provinces, in order to invest in the help that people need. Yes, we have federal money, but we are here to invest it with provinces in order to help Canadians. And that's what we need to do. <clears throat> The All right, folks, I want everyone to smash the like Mr. button Speaker. who hasn't yet. When my car we got over 2,500 viewers and 600 likes. Because my dentist doesn't know how to fix a car. They don't know how things work in Quebec. They have to uh, whittle together some skills in jurisdictions that are not theirs. Their interference makes things longer and more expensive. And it won't be better than if they just let us spend our money. The Right Honourable Prime Minister... We will always work hand in hand with the provinces in order to deliver services that Canadians need. But let us talk about dentists, Mr. Speaker. 1.7 million seniors throughout the country have signed up to our dental care program that will be delivered from coast to coast to coast, and that includes Quebec. We are here to make sure that seniors in Quebec and throughout the country 
can obtain the health care that they need and that they could not afford before now. We are here to help the well-being of all Canadians and all Quebecers, and we'll always do so, respecting jurisdictions and in partnership with our partners. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. From Burnaby South. Mr. Climate deny, Mr. Climate delay strike again. The Nights report shows that the Prime Minister is delaying $15 billion that he promised to hardworking Canadians to lower their costs and their emissions. Yet the Prime Minister has no problem finding $18.6 billion in free subsidies for big oil and gas. So why is it that the Prime Minister wants to put the shoulders or shoulder the burden of the climate crisis on hardworking people and not give them a hand, but wants to give billions of dollars, like the Conservatives, to big oil and gas yeah. corporations. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we committed to phase out inefficient fuel and gas subsidies, uh, uh, oil and gas subsidies, uh, two years ahead uh, of all of our partners around the world. We're going to continue to do that. But it's unfortunate to see that uh, the uh, NDP seems to be falling into the Conservative misinformation trap. Our price on pollution actually puts more money back in the pockets of eight out of ten Canadian families right across the country, particularly middle-income and low-income families, while we continue to fight climate change. Yes, Mr. Speaker, we developed a way to fight climate change and reduce emissions while putting more money in people's pockets. No. We're going to keep doing that. That's misinformation. Also, how are you fighting climate change with money? Remember for it doesn't make any sense. Paying the $15 billion for hardworking people, and that's wrong. Let it down here. Last summer, children were not able to go out and play and have fun in the park because of forest fire smoke. And yet, the Liberals think it is smart to delay climate action. They send $18 billion in subsidies to big oil companies, yet are delaying $15 billion in investments for the climate crisis and to help people. Why does the Prime Minister prefer to put money straight into the pockets of big oil CEOs instead of actually helping Canadians? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Indeed, Mr. Speaker, we see every single year the ever-worsening impacts of climate change and the costs thereof which uh, affect Canadians, our economy. And that is the reason for which we'll continue to fight against climate change whilst putting more money in the pockets of 8 out of 10 Canadians because this is a responsible plan that will fight against climate change and will help with the cost of living. Unfortunately, the Conservatives continue to say no to fighting climate change. They want to remove investments to help Canadians. Speaker, uh, the in coming leader of the Liberal Party has just given a speech and given advice to his soon-to-be predecessor. He said that he agrees, this is Mark Carney, says he agrees that there should be a carbon tax conference where the premiers can come together and share their concerns about the Prime Minister raising the cost of living and breaking the back of Canadians. Will the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister won't listen to me, he won't listen to the Liberal Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, will he at least listen to his successor and meet the premiers on the carbon tax? Canada only pays 1.5% of global, or Canada contributes to 1.5% of global emissions, yet we're supposed to pay 100% of it. These people are insane. Order. The Honourable Minister for Natural Resources. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Again, it is important for folks, for Canadians who are watching this debate, to be careful about the misinformation being spewed by the Leader of the Opposition. It is important for a responsible government in this country to have a plan for addressing climate change and do so in a manner that enhances and addresses affordability concerns. That is exactly what the price on pollution does. Eight out of ten Canadian families get more money back. Two hundred economists across the country agree with us. It is such a shame that we have a bunch of climate deniers over there who have no plan for the environment and no plan for the economy. Ask all members. Yeah, no, we should all just to, uh, pay money into it, right? Uh, only take the floor when they're recognized by the speaker. How much does it cost to put a I'll forest fire in? Recognize the Honourable uh, Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, uh, Mark Carney, uh, who is the next Liberal leader, is a fierce supporter of the carbon tax. He's been called carbon tax 
tax Carney in the past. <laughs> He's willing at least to defend his carbon tax views in front of the premiers. The prime minister is not. He's running for cover and hiding from Canadians, Literally, he's gone. refusing to defend his own policy decisions. If the Prime Minister is really so proud of his plan to hike the carbon tax to 61 cents a litre, why won't he listen to Mark Carney and have a big, open, televised carbon tax conference? Honorable Minister for Natural Resources. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's very interesting that the leader of the opposition seems so uh, so fond of Mark Carney these days, who actually, as you say, does believe in a price on pollution. Perhaps the leader of the opposition should listen to him. But it is important with respect to the premiers to know that the premiers have every right to submit a plan that actually meets the federal benchmark and put in place their own price on pollution. That is something that British Columbia has done. That is something that Quebec has done. Mr. Speaker, Premier Mo was actually here recently and, and testified before the committee. And what Premier Mo said is, we looked at all sorts of the price on pollution and everyone wanted them to be too expensive. This from a guy who has no climate plan, no. Hey, look at the Liberals. They got some dog in them. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. Last week, the Prime Minister increased the carbon tax by 23% on Canadians, on gas, on groceries, on home heating. He's doubling down and defying 70% of Canadians and eight premiers who want him to axe the tax. Six of those premiers wrote the Prime Minister asking for a meeting to talk about his punishing carbon tax. Instead, the Prime Minister just shot down the idea because they already had a meeting eight years ago. Can the Prime Minister tell us how many premiers he met in 2016 that are still in power today. The Honourable Minister for Families and Social Development. Mr. Speaker, actions speak more than words. Our actions on this side of the House, over 750,000. I'm going to ask the uh, Honourable Minister to start again because the Chair sincerely could not hear. Uh, what the minister was saying. The Honourable Minister for Families, Children and Social Development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I said, actions speak louder than words. On this side of the House, our actions, over 750,000 families benefiting from affordable childcare spaces, over 100,000 new spaces across the country, 7 million children whose parents benefit from the Canada Child Benefit, a national school food policy. Their actions, Mr. Speaker, vote against funding to increase the number of spaces, vote against a national school food policy, Mr. Speaker. They've made it clear they're not there for Canadian families. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. Mr. Speaker, I don't know if she missed the question, but Canadians certainly <laughs> missed the answer. It's zero. 2016 is the last time he had a meeting. Pokemon Go, dabbing, Harambe, that's what was popular in 2016. Oh, shit, an apartment for half the price. Since the last time the Prime Minister had a meeting with the Premiers, gas and groceries have skyrocketed and interest rates have increased 10 times over. So will he put aside his desperation and defiance, do some work around here, and meet the premiers. Drop a W for Melissa. Holy crap. Minister for innovation. Mentioning Pokemon Go and Harambe. We'll see today is one thing they will not hear from these conservative, Mr. Speaker, is the cost of inaction. The cost of forest fire, Mr. Speaker. The cost of flooding in our country. The cost of drought, Mr. Speaker. When each of these conservatives are standing up, they're telling Canadians they have no plan, Mr. Speaker, to fight climate change. On this side of the we recognize, like all Canadians, we need to act to save the planet. We need to act on climate change. That's why we're going to invest in Canadian. That's why we're going to continue to invest to make sure that we have a planet to live for our children. <laughs> I don't understand the chihuahua, man. <laughs> the Honourable Member for Louisa Hall. Oh, that was brutal. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Liberal government, housing has never been in such a sorry state. Rents have doubled, mortgages have doubled. And what's this government's strategy? To have a photo up. They always have an announcement with a follow-up. But yesterday, they, reached, they breached new grounds. Yesterday, the Prime Minister did a photo up on a roof. But that doesn't help Canadians put a roof over their heads. What is the government's plan to help Canadians who can't find a roof for uh, their heads? The Honourable Minister for Public Works and Government Services. As we said, 
there are two clear figures, six and eight thousand. As his during his mandate as uh, housing minister, there were six <clears throat> affordable housing units. If built. you haven't yet, folks, now's the time to smash the like button. Let's see if we can uh, get over an announcement that we'll create close. 42 new housing units. That means that in his riding, we have created seven more housing units than his uh, leader did during his mandate as housing minister. The honorable member for Just one second. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent from the top. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to tell my Honourable colleague that I know what happens in my writing and that, yes, people are finding it hard to make ends meet. Yes, inflation is, ta is hitting people hard. And yes, this government is just spending without control. And that is adding fire to the flames of inflation. It sure is. Mr. Speaker, the member who is a minister as well, who is a well-respected uh, academic, how will he explain to his future students that a budget can balance itself, like the Prime Minister keeps claiming? <laughs> He's got some jokes. The Honourable Minister, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague. I respect him. First of all, Austerity is not a solution in 2024. The second thing I have to say is that respect is the foundation of academic relations. And that is true everywhere in Canada. I would like him to apologize to Quebec, to Quebec City, because uh -huh. he called the leaders of Quebec City incompetent, which is a shambles. Interesting. The Honourable Member for Jonquière. New day, new interference. Today, <laughs> it's the mental health of students that the Liberals want to manage. The same government that, let's not forget, is incapable of paying its own public servants through Phoenix. The same one that was unable to print passports. The same one that lost control of the borders and exacerbated the housing crisis. Imagine, the government wants, now wants to manage the care offered to young people in distress. Are you reassured? Because I'm certainly not. Once again, since the federal government has no expertise in mental health, it manages no clinics and no psychologists, let's be serious one moment, Mr. Speaker. Is it finally going to transfer this money to Quebec? The Honourable Minister for Transport. Mr. Speaker, when we invest in housing, everyone, the blood cries, the conservative cries. When we invest in food for our <laughs> young students, they cry. When Pablo we Escobar from Wish. In our Got seniors, some jokes. The Bloc and the Quebec and the Bloc and the Conservatives cry. They're just crying together at the end of the day. You don't know which one's which at the end of the day. So at the end, we're just going to have the same people. Oh, well, what's going on? Dear colleagues, uh, I would like to ask all members to make sure that uh, language use uh, be respectful and of course, dignified power trip. in these halls. The Honourable Member for Jonquière. We'd just like to let the federal government know that we have collaborated well when they copied our childcare program. Given that we already had the skills, they sent us the money unconditionally, and everyone was happy. So why would it be different for mental health? With uh, pharma care that, we have, that we've had for nearly 30 years, with uh, dental care that we've had for over 50 years, why, for this case, can they not just simply transfer the money to Quebec? The Honourable Minister for Transport. Mr. Speaker, the bloc is never happy. We invest in housing, they're not happy. We invest in our children, they're not happy. We invest in food banks, they're not happy. The bloc is never happy. They're just losing their identity. They're being eclipsed by the conservatives who are doing their job better than they are. The Honourable Member for Avignon-La Métis, Matan Matapédia. 
while the Liberals try to govern Quebec. Instead of Quebec, no one is governing the federal government. There is no one to table a true transition plan for the fisheries sector. There is no one to deal with a, compre a comprehensive reform of employment insurance. This morning, we even learned that the federal government is $14 billion behind in its promises, promises rather, to invest in the fight against climate change. By meddling in other people's business, the government is forgetting oh, to they're gonna the catch up quickly. for which it is directly responsible. So, if there's no shortage of work at the federal level, <clears throat> why don't the Liberals actually get on with it and do their jobs? I can't believe Canada's being The Honourable Minister for the, the Environment climate, and Climate Change. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for her question. Seems As unbelievable. She knows full well for a long time. I've fought for the environment to fight against climate change, and back then we all had a dream. When I was in the private sector, we wanted a federal government that would invest billions upon billions in fighting climate change. It never happened before we came to power, Mr. Speaker. At the time, it was just $100 million, a couple of hundred million dollars. But now, these are a couple of hundred billion dollars that we are fight, that we're using to fight climate change. This is an absolute record in the history of our country. We are transforming the economy and jobs for decades to come and in fighting our climate change. The Honourable Member from Regina, Wiscana. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Liberal NDP government, this Prime Minister is just not worth the cost. The Prime Minister raised his carbon tax 23% last week, driving up the cost of gas and groceries. Fortunately, Conservative Bill C-234 will exempt farmers' grain drying and barn heating from the carbon tax so food remains affordable. Will the Prime Minister lower costs on farmers and make food cheaper by passing Bill C-234 in its original form? The Honourable Minister for what about Resources removing the carbon tax off Mr. of like, Speaker, kids' foods uh, and again, stuff like that? It's important to actually ensure that we're dealing with the facts. 97% of on-farm fuels exactly. are actually exempt from the price on pollution. And there is a rebate is to address uh, farmers and farm, uh, farm incomes on a go-forward basis. In Canada, 8 out of 10 Canadian families get more money back. In fact, That's Professor Dalton true. at the University of Regina, who the Honourable Member might want to go talk to, called out the Conservatives last week for misinformation. When Conservative leader and his ally and the Conservative leader's ally, Scott Moe, appeared before committee on the carbon price. Journalists called his appearance a parade of nonsense and completely dishonest. Conservative slogans and misinformation do not help Canadians with affordability. The Honourable Member from Regina, Wiscana. Mr. Speaker, it's clear that the Prime Minister is not going to back down from his carbon tax obsession. It's clear that he is going to continue to raise the carbon tax on gas, groceries and home heating and make, make life even more expensive for Canadians. Shameful. Since the Prime Minister refuses to call a carbon tax election, will he at least meet with the Premiers and listen to their plans to make life more affordable? The Honourable Minister for Natural Resources and Energy. Speaker, as the Honourable Member knows full well, provinces and territories can put in place their own Oh, here we go again! Price on pollution, that is what British Columbia has done, that is what Quebec has done, those provinces that are actually committed to fighting change. But the Honourable Member comes from a province that has no climate plan, no climate targets. Their, their, their Premier admits that the price on pollution is the most cost-effective way to reduce emissions, and yet he does nothing. That is shame, shame. Double shame. The Honourable Member from Red Deer Mountain View. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this NDP Liberal government, Canadians are tapped out. April 1st saw Canadians hit with a 23% carbon tax increase by these Liberals. As a farmer, Mr. Speaker, I know the first-hand true impact of carbon tax bills on farm operations. The Prime Minister is not worth the cost. It's time to axe the tax on farmers and food and pass Bill C-234. Will the Prime Minister lower costs on farmers and make food cheaper by passing Bill C-234 in its original form? The Honourable Minister for Agriculture and Agri-Food. Mr. Speaker, I appreciate my Honourable Colleague's question, but it's important to remind my colleague, as a farmer, I'm fully aware that farmers are on the front line of climate change. And it's important to realize, Mr. Speaker, that farmers are devastated by massive storms on the prairie, straw worth $300 a bale. That is crazy, Mr. Speaker. We have a, a plan to address climate change, and we have a, carbon, uh, a Canada carbon rebate that refunds put more money in 8 out of 10 Canadians. We are addressing climate change and making sure the polluters pay, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Yeah. 
The Honourable Member from Simcoe Gray. Mr. Speaker, while the Prime Minister tweets out sunny ways from his rooftop, food banks <laughs> in Simcoe County are reporting a 100% increase in use. Last week at the Angus Food Bank, I can't Director believe Trudeau posted that. told me that active soldiers from Base Borden are regular visitors. Let that sink in. Meanwhile, Liberals hiked the carbon tax by 23% and continue to delay Common Sense Bill C-234. Will the Prime Minister pass Bill C-234 in its original form and axe the tax on farmers and make food more affordable for all Canadians? Here, here, here. The Honourable Minister for Natural Resources and Energy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The whole structure of the price on pollution, as the Honourable Member knows, is done in a manner that creates an incentive to reduce carbon emissions, but do so in a manner that is affordable for Canadians. Eight out of ten Canadians get more money back. It works in direct proportion to income, so that those who live on the most modest incomes are the best off with respect to carbon pricing. Climate change is real, Mr. Speaker. Whether the Conservatives like to, to understand that or not, their Premiers, Scott Moe and Daniel Smith, have both admitted that carbon pricing is the most effective and efficient way to reduce emissions, get with the program. Yeah. Certain all members would like to make sure that uh, questions and comments are uh, directed through the chair. The Honourable L'Honorable Deputy de... The Honourable Member for New Westminster, Burnaby. Thanks to the NDP, we now have dental care in Canada. This was opposed by the corporate Conservatives at every single step. Now, the Democrats fought for nearly 2 million seniors who will benefit from the dental care program in a few weeks' time. Now, dentists are raising concerns about the rollout of the program. Seniors shouldn't have to wait any longer to benefit from going to their dentist. When will the, what will the minister do to ensure that every senior who is registered will benefit from the dental care program without delay? <laughs> The Honourable Minister of Health. Well, Mr. Speaker, uh, the, the Honourable Member is exactly right. When parties work together and focus on solutions, we get things done. And that means making sure that for millions of Canadians who don't have access to oral health care, they're going to get dental care. 1.7 million seniors have signed up. We've seen hundreds of thousands of dental providers across the country sign up. We're creating a new portal to make sure that it's even easier for dentists to participate by working together, both as parliamentarians, but as Canadians, we can get through difficult times by making things better together. The Honourable Member from North Island, Powell River. Mr. Speaker, the Guaranteed Income Supplement is a lifeline for seniors across this country. Shamefully, at a time when grocery prices and rents are sky high, the Liberals are clawing back this support for more than 100,000 seniors receiving workers' compensation. This is wrong. The Liberals shouldn't be punishing seniors who were injured on the job. When will this government reverse the clawback so that seniors can afford groceries and rent? Hey, 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 hey. The Honourable Minister for Labour. It's insane how in this house next to the much Minister of the government Health, is we gouging people. Just one of the largest social programs <laughs> that Canada has ever seen. We are now up to 1.8 million seniors who are now registered for Canada's new dental program. This is something that will save lives. This is something that will restore dignity to the lives of so many seniors. And with so many seniors that registered up until the month of May, yeah, I mean, they won't be able to afford to food, but they'll have the nice teeth of quality or health care, regardless of injury, regardless of birth rate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Here, here. Thank you, Justin Trudeau. Member for Saint Laurent. In 2017, our government released our defence policy, Strong, Secure, Engaged. Since then, the world has fundamentally changed. Russia has attacked Ukraine, the Arctic is more accessible to foreign actors, and the international rules that have kept us safe for over 75 years are increasingly challenged. As a member of the Standing Committee on National Defence, I have personally advocated for a modernization of our defence policy to better meet the needs of today. Can the Minister of Defence update this House on our government's work to update our existing defence policy? 
The Honorable Minister of National Defence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'd like to thank the member from Saint Laurent for her question. And I'm pleased to share with this House that yesterday, this we guy is one of the biggest defense, jokes. Our North, strong and free, is a clear plan to build Canadian armed forces that will defend our sovereignty and protect our interests globally. It's a responsible plan, Mr. Speaker, that will support the members of the Canadian Armed Forces and help us grow their numbers. It's a plan to acquire and maintain the equipment and capabilities that they require to fulfill their mission. It's a plan to assert our sovereignty to defend our country and our continent. And finally, Mr. Speaker, it's a plan that makes us strong at home so that we can be strong around the world. The Honourable Member from Oxford. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Liberal NDP government and their carbon tax, Canadians are struggling to put food on their tables. When you tax the farmer who grows the food and you tax the trucker who ships the food, you punish all Canadians who buy the food. Food banks like the Cambridge Food Bank are now seeing record-breaking demand. This Prime Minister's 23% carbon tax hike is not worth the cost. So will the Prime Minister lower the cost on farmers and make food cheaper by passing Bill 234 in its original form? The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, my colleague uh, talks about putting food on the table. I'm proud to be part of a government that believes that hungry kids should have food on the table. I'm proud to be part of a government that's taking action to implement a school food program so those hungry kids are able to eat when they go to school. It's unbelievable to me to hear this rhetoric from the Conservative opposition when they have the gall to stand up and vote against putting food These people on the are table delusional. for hungry kids. They talk a big game, but when they have a chance to do anything to put the food on the table for my constituents, they oppose at every turn. We'll do what it takes to help working class families, middle class families, and kids when it comes to putting food on the table. What a friggin' piece of work. He creates the problem by making it unaffordable and then offers a solution like he's some sort of godly figure and that we should thank the government for making giving kids food instead of making food actually affordable for the parents. It, it, it's so freaking ridiculous, man. Who falls for this? The Honourable Member for Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. That minister is so out of touch because here are the facts. After eight years of this Liberal NDP government, we have a record smashing two million Canadians using a food bank in a single month, with over a million more expected this year. Food banks like the one in Cambridge are now seeing dual-income families, work, full-time working Canadians, and our seniors lining up at the food banks. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Will this Prime Minister finally show some compassion and make food cheaper for Canadians by passing Bill 234 in its original form? Great job. The Honourable Minister for Families, Children and Social Development. The moms and dads across this country that we've been helping, I, I worry for them, Mr. Speaker. The Leader of the Opposition has been very clear, and his actions are all we need to know, all we need to point to. We point to their opposition of a motion and a vote to support a national school food program. We can point to their opposition and a vote to oppose expanding funding for more childcare to help families out. Mr. Speaker, their actions are clear. They will cut, cut, cut. The Honourable mem Member from Miramichi Grand Lake. Mr. Speaker, after eight years, the NDP Liberal government and the Prime Minister's 23% carbon tax is not worth the cost. The Prime Minister doesn't understand. If you tax the farmer who grows the food, you end up taxing the family who buys it. People are struggling in New Brunswick. 40 to 50 military families need to visit Gagetown Food Bank just to feed their kids. Now, UNB had to create their own food bank to feed their students. Will the Prime Minister lower costs on farmers and make food cheaper by passing Bill 234 in its original form? The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, it's hard to take seriously the Honourable Member's criticism when he and his party voted against a pay raise for the men and women who serve this country yes. in uniform. Oh, when here, here. we go That's to this chamber every day, we have an opportunity to stand up for policies that help middle class families put food on the table. When we cut taxes for the middle class and raise it on the wealthiest 1%, they voted against it. When we stop sending child care checks to the wealthiest people in this country so we could put more in the pockets of 9 out of 10 Canadian families, they voted against it. And now they want to justify their climate denialism from taking hundreds of dollars from families who live in our communities. It's not right, Mr. Speaker. We're going to do what it takes to help people. Yes. Here, here. By taxing
beaten them to death. Honorable member from Selkirk Interlake Eastman. When you tax the farmer who grows the food, <laughs> and you tax the trucker who hauls the food, then you hurt the families who buy the food. Things have gotten so bad under this liberal NDP carbon tax coalition that Dale Terry families stationed in Borden and Gagetown are having to be using food banks. And troops training right here in Ottawa are relying on food donations from college staff. After eight long years, this Prime Minister isn't worth the cost. Will the Prime Minister lower the cost on Canadian farmers and make food more affordable for all Canadians by passing Bill C-234 in its original form immediately? Yeah. Yeah, the Honourable Minister for National Defence. First of all, Mr. Speaker, let, let me respond to, because I share the concern about the welfare of every member of the Canadian Armed Forces. You know, we work very hard to make sure that our forces receive all of the supports in housing and in financial supports that they require to do the important mission that they perform for all of us in this country. And, Mr. Speaker, we recently negotiated, for example, a very substantial pay raise because they've earned it and they deserved it. And that's why it was such a huge disappointment when that member and all of his colleagues voted against the money for that pay raise. Mr. Speaker, we have a responsibility in this House to support the men and women who protect our country. The Honourable Member for Lac saint jean Mr. Speaker, imposing visas on Mexicans was necessary, but the federal government had promised that it would not affect workers. Now, Eastern Quebec is reeling from delays in the arrival of temporary foreign workers in the fishing and processing industries. Fortunately, since the Bloc Québécois leader wrote to the Minister of Immigration and the Prime Minister on March 25th, the situation has improved, and this should be acknowledged, but there are still concerns. We simply ask the Minister to reassure us. Can he confirm today that all the workers will arrive as soon as possible and that this situation will not affect other sectors like, for example, agriculture? Thank you. The Honourable Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the member for his question. It's a very relevant one. It's clear that we all want a successful fishing season in Quebec, in Canada, those, when those fisheries depend on Mexican visas that need to be issued, we are working 24 hours a day so that this is done quickly. We will continue working on this. We're not out of the woods, but I have hope given the hard work of the teams working on this. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Avignon, La Métis, Matan, Matapédia. There's a way to be both responsible at the border and responsible towards the entire fishing and processing economy in the Gaspé Peninsula and eastern Quebec. We simply have to work intelligently and without partisanship. The cooperation of the Minister of Immigration is to be commended, but he has the fate of the entire with their industry fisheries. in his hands. <clears throat> One company has already closed because workers didn't arrive in time for the opening of the fishery, and others are afraid of Lots suffering of the tape. same fate when their season opens for lobster. Can the minister reassure them that workers will arrive as soon as possible? The Honourable Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship. As I said clearly to her colleague, we are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so that is the case. And imposing the visa on Mexico, which the Bloc Québécois called for, which is important, which we need to continue to underline, insofar as there are workers who have to have their passport stamped in Mexico. It has to continue. They need to do it with third parties who are helping those factories. At RARCC, we will work 24 hours a day so that it can be processed within 24 hours. Thank you. The Honourable Member for lévis latpignard Mr. Speaker, after more than eight years of this Liberal government, we all know it's not worth the cost. The price of housing continues to soar, and the government is forgetting about municipalities to increase new housing construction. Mr. Speaker, will the Prime Minister finally build housing and eliminate bureaucracy in his next budget? The Honourable Minister of Innovation. We won't take any lessons from the Conservatives. What we are presenting is a plan for Canadians, a plan to build more housing, a plan to create more jobs, a plan to have more prosperity in the country. Mr. Speaker, Canadians watching at home understand that slogans don't create jobs, slogans don't build houses, and slogans don't create economic prosperity, no, Mr. Speaker. We'll jobs. let the Conservatives <clears throat> keep to their slogans and videos. <laughs> we will nobody ever? Canadians. No, the Honourable Member for Lévis-Latpignard. Mr. Speaker, 
housing prices will continue to skyrocket, warns the CMHC. The average cost of an apartment could rise by 27 percent over the next three years in the Montreal region. A conservative government, government will reward cities that increase housing construction. Why, Mr. Speaker, doesn't the Prime Minister listen to common sense and work with his provincial and municipal partners to build the housing needed for the well-being of all Canadians? <laughs> The Honourable Minister of Innovation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. People laugh at home when they hear the Conservative members talk about cooperating with municipalities. The last time the Conservative leader spoke to the Mayor of Quebec City, the Mayor of Montreal, he insulted them. Is there anyone who thinks that cooperating is about insulting others? In 2024, it's about cooperation. That is why we put forward a plan to build more housing, help more people, create more prosperity. That's how we work in the interest of Canadians. The Honourable Member for Podnef Jacques-Cartier. Mr. Speaker, I'll talk to you about another scandal. After eight years of this Liberal government, the number of homeless people is increasing everywhere in Canada at a rapid pace. Let's take the example of saint Jerome, according to a Radio Canada article. Isa, a newly homeless woman, said, There's always my daughter who could help me, but I don't want to be a burden on her. Can this government have a little heart? My question is simple, Mr. Speaker. Will this Prime Minister finally do everything possible to build housing and stop piling on the bureaucracy in next Tuesday's budget? Oh. The Honourable Minister of Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, it's essential to invest to build housing. The more Sean Fraser talks with Quebec ugh, to build affordable housing. After an agreement with Quebec with $1.8 billion, we are building 8,000 affordable housing units just in Quebec. Harrison, across the entire country, when the Conservative leader was the housing minister, they constructed a total of six affordable housing units nationwide. Shame. There is no contest when it comes to supporting the most vulnerable. I question their authenticity when they actually talk about the investments, when they vote against the money behind the program. The Honourable Member from Davenport. Mr. Speaker, residents in Davenport are concerned about the fact that the Conservative Party wishes to cut their Canada carbon rebate. For most Canadians, each penny counts. The members of my writing depend on these checks. Can the Minister of the Environment and Climate Change explain to the House how these Canada carbon rebates reduce emissions and how these checks help Canadian families? <laughs> <laughs> What's up with the Minister military of the Environment fatigues? and Climate Change. <laughs> I thank my colleague for her question and also for her efforts in French. I'd like to highlight that starting on Monday, the Canada carbon rebate will increase on April 15th for a family in Ontario, $280 four times a year. The PBO said two weeks ago that the measure that has the least impact on the economy that allows us to reduce greenhouse gas if it emissions is the pollution price. Over 200 economists have confirmed this, and the Premier of Saskatchewan, with whom I just about never agree, has admitted that it's the best way to reduce climate change. Well, member from Yorkton, Melville. Speaker, after eight years of this Prime Minister's record high debt and deficits, he's not worth the cost of his overpriced socks. Inflation and interest rates continue <laughs> to make lives worse. Now, an economist one. has said that interest rate cuts may be further delayed because of this NDP Liberal government's out of control spending. Conservatives have offered a common sense solution to fix the upcoming budget. When will this Prime Minister stop his out of control deficits with a dollar for dollar rule? Find a dollar in savings for every new dollar he spends. The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Mr. Speaker, we will take no lessons from the Conservative, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> what representing Canadian is a plan to build more homes, Mr. Speaker? I what don't agree with Canadian him. Is a plan to create more jobs. But I like his energy. Mr. Speaker, what representing the Canadian is a plan for prosperity. Audience He's the only one that's alive on the Liberal side. Slogans. Canadian 
Canadians at home understand that slogans don't create jobs, slogans don't build homes, slogans don't build prosperity, Mr. Speaker. We'll let them invent a new slogan while we focus on the matters of Canadians. The Honourable Member from Renfrew Nipissing, Pembroke. Mr. Speaker, after eight years, this NDP Liberal government's addiction to spending is out of control. They're getting high off an unsafe supply of, of drugs and borrowed money. Their spending habit is driving up inflation. Interest rate cuts might be stalled because of out of control spending. Their far left allies in BC just had their credit rating cut. This Prime Minister and his socialist coalition are not worth the cost. This government must find a dollar in savings for every dollar spent. Will the Prime Minister cap spending with a dollar for dollar rule to bring down? Yeah, good effort. Good effort. The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, the member opposite continues to ask questions but not really focus on what her party has continuously done, which is vote against measures to support Canadians time and time again. 120 votes prior to the holidays, all night voting, voting against children, voting against supports for families, and voting against our military, Mr. Speaker. So we will take no lessons from the Conservatives in terms of supporting Canadians because our government will always be there for them. After eight years of this Liberal NDP government, this Prime Minister continues to demonstrate that he's not worth the cost. This government has added more to the national debt than all previous prime ministers combined. Yes, wow. combined. And now a leading economist has stated that interest rates cuts are being delayed because of this massive government overspending. Wow. Will the prime minister cap government spending with a dollar for dollar rule, which finds one dollar of savings for every dollar of new spending, so that interest rates come down and people can stay in their homes. Great job. Yeah, that would be ideal. Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, let's look at the facts. Inflation is at 2.8%, down two months in a row below wow, 3%. Guys. Triple A credit like rating, ben Mr. Shapiro. Speaker. And just in the last nine months, a food program for to students in school. We're going to make sure that there's homes built across this country. How did that member and his Ontario colleagues vote when it came for the plant in St. Thomas? How did they vote when it came to support the floor plant? They voted against. We're here for Canadians. That's what they expect. We're going to that each and every day. Yeah, he's got some dog in him. There you go. We got two Liberals that are alive. A member from Calgary Skyview. Look at that. Mr. Speaker, we know that folks need to be connected, especially in rural, remote, and Indigenous communities in Alberta. It allows access to education, jobs, health care services, and innovation that otherwise... Get out of here, Monopoly man. <laughs> for 10 years, the Conservatives failed to prioritize investments and connectivity. Shit, because of their lack of action, communities in my province have been left out of those opportunities. That, that the good funny. news is that our government is tackling this issue head on. Can the government tell us what progress has been made towards connecting Albertans to affordable quality? The Honourable Minister. Since 2015, we have been making investments in Alberta, Mr. Speaker, to, so Albertans can access the tools of the 21st century. Today, just under 90% of Albertans have access to high-speed internet. In March, I was there to announce 14 projects to connect over 22,000 homes, That's quite 3, the hair. 400 Indigenous homes, all in rural Alberta. This $112 million investment is in partnership with the province as part of our commitment to connect all Canadians by 2030. We will always stick up for Albertans, Mr. Mr. Speaker, and my colleague from Calgary Skyward always sticks up for Albertans and his constituents too. Thank you. Bravo. The Honourable Member from Victoria. Mr. Speaker, Canadians are experiencing the brunt of the climate crisis with damage caused by flooding and the fear of wildfire evacuations. All well, the Liberals are rewarding the very people who are getting rich off it. Liberals gave over $18 billion to rich oil and gas companies last year. And today, we found out they broke $15 billion in climate promises. They announced $15 billion just for the photo ops. Why is it that the Liberals have no problem
problem, rewarding Canada's biggest polluters. But they won't invest in our children's... The Honourable Minister Coalition, for the then. Climate Change. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my honourable colleague for her question. As she knows, I was an environmental activist for many years, and in my years, we could only dream... Yeah, you climbed the CN Tower, buddy. Tens of billions of dollars try in to, the transition to fight climate change, to create the jobs and the economy of the 21st century, Mr. Speaker. We have committed more than $100 billion since 2015 in the fight against climate change. That's not double what had been done before. That's not four times more that had been done before. That's not 10 times more. It's 20 times more. Wow. That that has never been done before in Canada in terms of investment to fight climate change and create the opportunities of Real the 21st act. century. Level, level, level. The Honourable Member from Skeena, Bulkley Valley. Mr. Speaker, many Canadians were let down when the Liberals suddenly no, ended the Greener Homes program. And yesterday we learned that over a billion dollars promised to that program went unspent. Wow. Meanwhile, across Canada, hundreds of people built their careers and their businesses on providing service as part of Greener Homes. They were urged to do that by this government. Now they feel like the rug's been pulled out from under them. Some of them are selling their equipment. Why has this minister left these important clean energy workers in limbo? Here, here, here. The Honourable Minister for Energy and Nat sorry, Natural Resources you, and Energy. For the question and for the, the discussion that he and I had at the airport on this particular subject, and I think we are intending to meet more about it going forward. The uh, Greener Homes program was indeed very successful. We actually utilized all of the funding early, um, and, uh, and thus we have closed the portal. But we have also announced we will be moving forward with a new program that will be focused on folks who live on modest incomes, enabling them to make deep retrofits moving forward, to reduce carbon emissions, and to enhance their energy savings on an ongoing basis. And we are very much committed to putting that in force. Et voici, on arrive à la fin. And that's the end, of course. the end. We're not looking up in the gallery, folks. This is my last question period. I am heading to Ottawa later this evening. And I'll be attending live in person tomorrow. Now, don't be alarmed. The stream will still run tomorrow. My wife is going to handle the back end of, the, of that operation. So I want you guys to tune in. But I want you to subscribe. I want you to subscribe and turn post notifications on to this channel. As well as Mr. Sunshine Baby. Because I will be doing a live stream uh at Parliament at some point. So stay tuned for that. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And I will see you guys back on these streams uh, sometime soon. But I hope to see you guys in the chat tomorrow because I will be up in the gallery. At least that is the plan. Peace and love, everybody. On your way out, smash the like button. Subscribe if you haven't yet already. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.